When Jack was growing up, he lived with his mother and daddy and his brothers, Will and Tom, and they had a pretty good life. Until one day, Jack's daddy disappeared. They didn't know what happened to him, and of course they were all very sad, and it was a real hardship on the, on the family. Will and Tom and Jack, they all had to get a job in town. And Jack, he got to feeling really low down and miserable. He was just feeling sorry for himself. And he got so bad, his mama had to take him aside. She said, you know, Jack, if you can't make it on your own, you ain't going to make it at all. Well, Jack took these words to heart and he said, okay, mama, okay. I'm going to make it. Well, one of the things that was so difficult about this job that they all had in town was that town was four miles away. So they had to wake up really early in the morning and then walk four miles into town, work all day long. And then at the end of the day, when they were hungry and tired, they had to walk four miles home. Well, there was one morning when Will, the oldest of the brothers, overslept. Guess he didn't hear the rooster crowing that morning. When he finally woke up, he saw the sunlight slanting through the window, realized what he had done. He jumped out of bed, threw on his clothes. He went running down the road, trying to make up time, just going as fast as he could. He was going so fast, he almost ran over this little old lady. Excuse me, Sonny. Could you help an old lady carry a bundle of sticks? No, ma'am, I'm in an awful hurry. And as Will ran past her, he saw that old lady turn and stick her tongue out at him. Well, that was rude, thought Will. But he went on to work and he forgot about what happened. Well, a week or so later, there was one morning when Tom, the middle brother, overslept. Guess he didn't hear the rooster crowing that morning. When he finally woke up, he saw the sunlight slanting through the window. He realized what had happened. He jumped out of bed, threw on his clothes. He ran out the door. He was racing down the road so fast, he almost ran over this little old lady. Excuse me, Sonny. Could you help an old lady carry a bundle of sticks? No, ma'am, said Tom. I'm in an awful hurry. And as he rushed past her, he saw her turn and stick her tongue out at him. Well, that was rude, thought Tom. Now, Tom thought this was so rude, he kept thinking about it all day long. And that night when they were all sitting around the dinner table, he told his family about it. Well, after he was done telling, Will said, yeah, the same thing happened to me a week ago when I was running late. Now, Jack thought about this. He didn't want to meet that rude old lady, and he knew he better not oversleep. But you know what happened. There was one morning, a week or so later, when Jack overslept. He just didn't hear the rooster crowing that morning. When he finally woke up, he saw the sunlight slanting through the window. He realized what had happened. He jumped out of bed, threw on all his clothes, ran out the door. He was racing down the road so fast, he almost ran over this little old lady. Excuse me, Sonny. Could you help an old lady carry a bundle of sticks? And you and I know that Jack has a soft spot in his heart for people in need. So he bent down to pick up that bundle of sticks from the little old lady. And when he did, she took one of those sticks and cracked him over the head with it. The next thing Jack knew, he woke up in a deep, dark, underground cavern. And he knew a few things right away. First of all, he knew that that little old lady was not what she had seemed. The same little old lady who acted like she couldn't carry a bundle of sticks had thrown him over her shoulder and she had carried him in to that underground cavern. The other thing he knew right away was that he could not get out of that cavern by himself. 
because he vaguely remembered that they had taken all kinds of twists and turns and there were other tunnels going off in other directions and there was just no way he could find his way out. Jack examined his surroundings. There was a little old man in the cavern with him. Little old man didn't look too good. He was very pale, like he hadn't been out in the light of day in a long time. He was scrawny, like he hadn't gotten a lot of good food to eat. The little old man was feeding sticks to a fire and on top of the fire, there was this great big cauldron. And then the little old lady showed up. Turns out she was a witch. And she said, all right, Jack, here's the plan. I am going to collect all the magical plants and herbs in the world. And I am going to collect them all within one year. I am going to cook them down in that cauldron. And then I am going to drink the contents of the cauldron. And when I do that, I will have all the wisdom of the world. And your job, Jack, is that you will stir the cauldron. I don't want any of the wisdom to burn. I don't want the wisdom sticking to the edges. And that is exactly what Jack had to do. Every day, the witch went out in search of magical plants and herbs. At the end of the day, she would return to the cavern. She would put everything she had collected that day into the cauldron. And overnight and over the next day, it would cook down. So there was plenty of room for whatever she collected the next day. And all day and all night, Jack had to sit there stirring the cauldron. He didn't get a break to sleep or rest. All he could do is if one arm got tired, he could switch and stir with the other arm. And he didn't get breaks to eat. Once in a while, the witch would give him some water and some bread but he'd have to stir with one hand and eat and drink with the other. And the little old man, he had to keep feeding sticks to that fire to keep it burning nice and even. This went on for almost a year, but as it got close to the end of a year, the witch started to get nervous because if she didn't collect all the magical plants and herbs in the world within one year, it wouldn't work. She wouldn't have all the wisdom of the world. And so she started staying out later and later, traveling further and further, trying to find even more magical plants and herbs. Until one night, the witch stayed out so late that the liquid inside the cauldron boiled down to almost nothing. There was just one little drop bouncing around inside the bottom of the cauldron. And then the flames flared up. That drop jumped out of the cauldron onto the back of Jack's hand and he didn't even think about it. Ouch! He licked it off. What the witch didn't know was that she had already collected all the magical plants and herbs in the world. And so when she was staying out later and later every day, she was only collecting perfectly ordinary plants and herbs that made no difference to the wisdom at all. And also that liquid inside the cauldron, it already contained all the wisdom of the world. And so when Jack licked that drop off his hand, he got all the wisdom of the world. Now that Jack had all the wisdom of the world, he looked at that little old man and he realized that was his daddy. That's what had happened to him when he disappeared. The witch had taken him just like she took Jack. 
Well, then the witch showed up. She marched over to the cauldron. She saw it was empty. She picked it up and licked the inside, but it didn't do any good. All the wisdom was gone. She looked at Jack and she knew that he had her wisdom and she intended to get it back from him. She started chasing him around inside the cavern. Well, now that Jack had all the wisdom of the world, he knew all the right twists and turns to take to get out of that deep, dark, underground cavern. And so he made his way out into a cool night and oh, it felt so good to be in the fresh air again. But that witch, she was pretty spry for a little old lady and she stayed right behind Jack. Well, now that Jack had all the wisdom of the world, he had learned the art of shape changing. He turned himself into a rabbit and bounded away from the witch. But that old witch, she was a shape changer from way back. She just turned herself into a dog and she stayed right on Jack's heels. Next, Jack turned himself into a sparrow. He flew up off the ground. The witch turned herself into a hawk. She flew high above Jack and then she plummeted toward him with her talons extended. And at the last moment, right before she grabbed him. Jack turned himself into a kernel of corn and dropped into the middle of a cornfield. He thought, she'll never find me now. The witch landed in the cornfield. She turned herself into a hen and she began pecking at the corn. She didn't concern herself with looking for which kernel of corn was Jack. She just kept pecking at that corn until finally she had the kernel of corn that was Jack in her beak. And when she had him there in her beak, she knew that was Jack. She held him in her beak and she transformed herself back into a person. She kept that kernel of corn right between her back molars. She didn't want to hurt Jack. She wanted to get the wisdom back from him. But she figured if he tried anything, if he tried to turn himself into something bigger, she could just bite down on him. But Jack had all the wisdom of the world. He did not turn himself into something larger. He turned himself into something smaller. He became a little worm and he burrowed underneath one of the witch's back teeth and he gave her the worst toothache in the history of the world. She stumbled home in pain. She tied up her head in a handkerchief. She, she went down to the market hoping to find some, some medicine, something she could make a potion with and she ran into a cart of apples and she got an idea. She took an apple, she went home and she got her pliers. She went down to the river she thrust the pliers into her mouth, yanked out that tooth, shoved it into the apple and threw the apple into a river. Well, if you're a little tiny worm, an apple is a pretty good place to be. Jack entertained himself burrowing little tunnels all through the apple. And when he finally stuck his wormy head out the side of that apple and looked around, well, the apple had floated all the way down to the ocean. Jack looked around and he thought that his best bet was probably to just stay as a worm inside the apple. And so he did. Jack floated along on the surface of the ocean as a worm in an apple for seven years. Now you may wonder how Jack survived as a worm in an apple on the surface of the ocean for seven years, but you have to remember that he had all the wisdom of the world and he used the wisdom to survive. After seven years, that apple washed up on the shores of America. Once he was on dry land, Jack busted out of that apple. He turned himself back into a person, stretched his arms and legs, and oh, it felt good to have arms and legs again. He looked around and he was in a strange place, far away from all the people and the things that he loved. 
And he started to feel kind of sorry for himself. He started to feel kind of low down and miserable. But then he remembered something his mama had told him a long time ago. If you can't make it on your own, Jack, you ain't gonna make it at all. Jack said to himself, I'm gonna make it. And he did.